Good morning guys and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is an idea that I've been toying around with for a while. Some people have asked me to resume doing declutters because they miss them and other people still kind of like the idea of sticking to a 12 month no declutter idea and personally I think I'm going to stick to the 12 month no declutter because I just need to do it for myself. I really need to make sure that I'm giving all my perfumes a proper run for their money. However, there are a few fragrances that I wanted to share with you that are pretty much on the chopping block, meaning that if my feelings do not change about these perfumes over the next 10 months or so, they're definitely going to be going and a couple of them I feel I could let go of them today with absolutely no regrets, but that is why we're doing a 12 month no declutter because I want to make absolutely perfectly sure before I let them go. I want to make sure that this time if I let them go they're gone for good and I will not look back and think twice. Um, so yeah, so if you guys are new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. My name is Alithia and on this channel we do talk mostly about perfume. We also do a little bit of fashion, home decor, minimalism, decluttering, things like that. If you're into that kind of thing, I would love if you would consider sticking around and subscribing. Also feel free to head on over and follow me on Instagram. And with that out of the way, let's get started in today's video. Good morning guys. So I'm still drinking my morning coffee here. And as you can see, I do have a basket in front of me and in this basket are a couple of perfume pretty surefire declutters. I'm pretty sure that when I do my big declutter at the end of the year, these perfumes will end up in that declutter. I didn't want to spoil it for you because I do think there's a couple more that will make it into that final declutter video, but I didn't want to ruin the excitement at the end of the year, so I just chose a few that I'm pretty sure are going to go. And these are ones that if I was to get rid of them today, I don't think well, I know I would not miss them. And I think one of them will be shocking to you and the other three you probably expected would be in here, but one of them might be a little bit like surprising to you guys. And so, yeah. And before we get into those fragrances, I do want to share with you a couple of fragrances that were sent to me kindly from Max Aroma. So let's get on into those perfumes first. So if you haven't heard of Max Aroma, they are a fragrance and cosmetic company that's based out of New York and they do ship internationally as well as domestically in the US and you do get free shipping on orders $10 and above in the US, which is really amazing because I know I have a lot of US viewers and they do have a huge selection of designer and niche fragrances. So you can find really luxurious, more expensive houses, things like Raja. You can also find really great designer products like Lancome, Calvin Klein, Marc Jacobs, things like that. So it's not just exclusive to niche. You can kind of find a little bit of everything on their website and they are always dropping new brands and getting new lines of fragrances in all the time. Things like Maison Cire, and they're also getting a whole bunch of new different niche houses that you might not have heard about before, which I really appreciate. I think it's really fun to discover new niche houses that not everybody has something from that house. Max Aroma is definitely a great place to check out. I will have everything linked in the description box for you as well as an exclusive link for you guys to use if you would like to shop on their website. So thank you again so much to Max Aroma for sponsoring today's video. So the first fragrance that was sent to me by Max Aroma is called La Tessa, and this is from Mask Milano. If I'm saying that properly I really hope I'm not betraying these names you guys because I haven't actually heard of these perfumes before so this is a beautiful iris powdery scent so for those of you who are lipstick lovers and you like that whole cosmetic -y, powdery iris oris root thing this is definitely one to check out and first of all I want to give you a close-up of the bottle it is absolutely beautiful and really unique. I haven't seen a bottle like this before. This is just an absolutely beautiful sort of creamy sandalwoody powdery iris fragrance. So it really reminds me a lot of Maison Margiela Lipstick On, um, Juliet Has a Gun Lipstick Fever, those types of perfumes, although Lipstick Fever has more of a fruity component to it and Lipstick On has more of that true lipsticky smell. This one has a little bit more of an earthy, not really an earthy, but more of a creamy woody kind of a leather touch. Not that it smells masculine, it doesn't smell like straight up leather or anything like that, but it definitely is a little bit richer and a little more complex than lipstick on. So it opens with champagne, bergamot, and neroli. In the middle you have iris, orris root, ylang ylang, and tuberose, and in the base you have leather, oak moss, and sandalwood. This is just a really elegant, beautiful, powdery, lipsticky scent, and if you like that kind of scent, this is definitely one to check out. The second one is from a house called Stefani de Bruin. I'm sorry if I'm betraying that. I hope I'm not. I've not heard of this house before, and the fragrance itself is called La Sully. So again, I hope I'm pronouncing that properly, and I did want to show you all of 
the packaging because this packaging is beautiful. So first of all, it comes in a beautiful white box like this and it is covered with this beautiful gold paper on top and the box opens to reveal the perfume inside. And this is the elegant, stunning bottle. So I absolutely love this. I was just blown away by the beautiful packaging and just the elegance overall of this fragrance. So this is predominantly a vanilla perfume. So for those of you who are vanilla lovers like myself and you're looking for something that is a little bit more unique, not everybody out there has it, something that you haven't really smelled before, this is an incredibly beautiful, elegant vanilla perfume to check out. I feel like if you like something like Zerjoff Dama Bianca, you will probably really like this. It doesn't smell like Dama Bianca, but it has the same feeling in the sense that it is is very elegant, it is very pretty, it's vanilla centric, and it's different. So not a vanilla you have smelled on every other person, which is really, really nice. So the notes that you have in here are vanilla, musk, amber, iris, bergamot, tonka bean, and cedar. And definitely the most prominent notes that I get in here is that vanilla. I also get quite a heavy dose of the bergamot. It's strangely very fresh, while at the same time being a warm, comforting, powdery vanilla. Really unique and really gorgeous. Let me just take the cap off. You guys, I'm obsessed with this bottle. This is one of the prettiest bottles I've ever seen. It very much gives me like YSL vibes or Chanel vibes. It has that very classic, um, timeless sophistication about the bottle. Oh my gosh, this is so pretty. This is just, uh, this is absolutely beautiful, you guys. And when I sprayed this on paper for the first time, it actually took my breath away. It was one of those perfumes that actually took my breath away. It was so beautiful and so unique. And it dries down to this really comforting, cozy, sort of almondy, powdery vanilla, but it retains that sort of fresh bergamot all throughout. Very difficult to explain, but it's, it's, oh, it's so pretty. It's one that you would have to try to fully appreciate. And now that I have tried one fragrance from this house, uh, Stefan, Stefani de Bruin, if I'm saying that properly, I would really love to check out more from this house because this is incredible. And the lasting power with this perfume is immense. It's huge. So I will definitely link this one down below. I feel like there's a lot of people out there who would absolutely go crazy for this one. I have to say that my preference between the Latessa and this, I do think I prefer this one for sure. It just is more me. It's more girly and sweet and vanilla and it's interesting and it's just, it's beautiful. This would be great for the summer. This would be a beautiful everyday scent. This would also be a beautiful bridal scent, special occasion, just really, really gorgeous, gorgeous vanilla. So yeah, that is the last one from Max Aroma. Thank you so much to them again for sending me these beautiful perfumes. And now let's get into my declutters. So like I said, you guys, these are not actually going to be physically decluttered from my collection at the moment. I still wanna make sure that I am 100% absolutely certain before I let anything go because a couple of the perfumes that I may let go of at the end of the year are ones I've really had to revisit a couple of times. So I wanna make absolutely 100% sure that I'm not going to change my mind about them. So the first one is Burberry Her, and this one will not come as a surprise if you watch my channel. A lot of you know that I am not a huge straight up strawberry fan, and this has a lot of strawberry. This also has a lot of sour cherry in it. I believe it's sour cherry. Um, it's really just a it's a sweet, berry, fruity musk. And if I'm being perfectly honest with myself and listening to my gut instinct and my first feelings when I smell this, I don't really like it. The reason I bought it is because I was really easily influenced and so many people love this perfume and I just, I really wanted to like it. I wanted, I wanted it to grow on me. I was really thinking that this one might eventually grow on me and I keep coming back to it and spraying it and testing it out and there's not a whole lot missing from the bottle but I've given it a shot here and there and I just still don't like it that much you guys so don't be surprised if at the end of the year this one is in that massive declutter that I'm planning to do because I just don't think the chances of this one growing on me are very good. So yeah, that is Burberry Her. Nothing wrong with it. It's a beautiful perfume. I think it's just strawberry and me 
don't get along all that well. The second one that will probably end up in that declutter video is Victoria's Secret Bare Vanilla. So this is a beautiful, warm, cashmere comforting vanilla perfume, or body mist, I should say. And actually what this smells like a lot, you guys, is Indel Tijota, which was created by Francis Kirchon, and it is quite an expensive niche fragrance. And I really loved Indel Tijota, don't get me wrong. It was one of the most mind-blowing, beautiful, rather simple, but one of the most gorgeous vanillas I've ever smelled in my life. The trouble that I had with Tijota and the trouble that I'm having with this bare vanilla, it is just a little too much vanilla. There's not enough else going on in it. I prefer something that has a little bit more sweetness or complexity or something going on with either some woody notes or some orchid or some floral notes or something. I don't like a straight up vanilla that doesn't have a lot else going on. If I've ever owned a vanilla that was like that, for the most part, I have not kept it. Um, I have been wearing this. As you can see, there's a pretty good dent. I mean, not huge, but there's a pretty good dent in there. I've actually been wearing this to work a lot because it's, even though it lasts a long time, this actually has pretty good lasting power and it smells really nice. It's not overpowering. It's very soft and very pretty and doesn't bother people. Um, it's one that I go back and forth with a lot because it does smell pretty incredible. It's a beautiful vanilla body spray. I'm also not a huge body spray fan. I don't tend to keep body sprays for very long. Um, so yeah, this one I'm pretty much 100% sure because it's like every other day I'm thinking of decluttering it. I'm thinking it's not me. I don't think I love it that much. And if every other day I'm contemplating, that's a pretty obvious sign that I just need to let it go. So this one will probably for sure as well be in my Epic Declutter at the end of the year. Again, I will revisit it a couple times because you never know, but as it sits right now, that is where my head is at. The next one that will probably definitely make it into my declutter at the end of the year is Dolce & Gabbana, the only one. Now this one is one that I have revisited a couple times. I owned it once before a couple years ago, decluttered it in favor of black opium because I preferred black opium, re-smelled it in the store, thought that I wanted it back, and now again, I don't think that it is working out for me. This will not be a surprise to you guys. I've talked about this one a few different times. This is a very beautiful coffee caramel, I believe violet is in here and maybe iris and a few other notes. It's kind of a more floral take on a caramel coffee-ish perfume. I actually don't get a whole lot of coffee in here. It's in there, but it's not like super strong. And this is a beautiful, um, beautiful, feminine, elegant, kind of sweet, everyday, easy, grab and go perfume, but would also be good for date nights very sophisticated. I really like it, but there's something about it that just doesn't sit well with me, especially once it's on my skin. It just doesn't sit quite right with me and I just have not been enjoying it. And I have worn it a couple of times. It's not like I got it and then it's just sat there. I've actually worn it a few times to give it that chance and it just is not doing it for me. So yeah, when it comes to my sweet coffee perfumes, I definitely still prefer all of the black opiums. I know that that's very like whatever you want, basic or whatever you want to call it, but that is honestly how I feel. This is just, this one in particular is just not doing it for me. So, and finally, the one that I am pretty sure, like 99.999% sure that I can get rid of without hesitation, without feeling bad or FOMO or anything like that is Lyra from Zerjoff. Now this one, you guys, I struggle with in a sense because as somebody who talks about perfume a lot on my channel, again, I don't like to consider myself a perfume reviewer because I am nowhere near an expert. I'm just a person who likes perfumes and I like to try them out and talk about them. I'm not an expert, but as somebody who could be considered part of the perfume niche. This I feel is a must have. So many people rave about this perfume and it's very popular. It's very coveted. A lot of people want it. It's very expensive. It can be hard to get. And this is an incredible gourmand perfume. So this is a lemony, sweet, kind of a cookie, biscuit, um, caramel, vanilla scent. Although it doesn't actually have any notes of lemon in it, it does come across quite lemony. There is, I believe, blood orange and bergamot in here. There is a little bit of cinnamon, there's caramel, there's vanilla. This is just a super decadent, relaxing, comforting, delicious perfume that when I smell it, I second guess myself and I think, do you really want to let go of that perfume? Like, do you really want to let go of it? But you guys, here's the thing. I love the way it smells. 
I have discovered over the last six months or so, I'm sure a lot of you guys will know this because I also let go of Chocolate Greedy, I just don't like smelling gourmand. I love the way cookies and cakes smell, I love the way cupcakes smell, I love the way caramel and vanilla smell, but I don't want to smell straight up like a cookie or a pastry or a dessert or a food. I do not want to smell like a food. I like to smell more feminine, more floral. I just, I like to smell more perfumey, if you know what I mean. So even though this is definitely one of the most delicious scents I've ever smelled, it's incredible. I don't like smelling like this, if that makes any sense. And yes, it is one of the best perfumes I've ever smelled in my life. It truly is one of the most beautiful, delicious, sweet, caramel vanilla perfumes I've ever smelled. Um, but that doesn't mean that I need to keep it and wear it. It's one that can still be ranked up there, you know, like top of the list in terms of caramel vanilla, 100%. Doesn't mean I want to smell like that though. So I hope that people understand that. I feel like, I don't know, I feel like there's a lot of misunderstanding when it comes to keeping perfumes, not keeping perfumes. Why would you let one go? Why would you keep one? Everybody is so different and it's very personal, but I think the people who understand, understand. And um, yeah, I just don't want to smell super gourmand. So. I don't want to rattle on about this too much. The other thing I've noticed about this one is that although it's a gorgeous perfume, it doesn't have the greatest projection and sillage. I've never, ever, ever, ever received a compliment when wearing Lyra. I don't know if people can actually smell it on me when I have sprayed myself like crazy with this and I've walked in front of my daughter and said, hey, can you smell me or do I smell good? And she basically was like, no, I can't smell you. It doesn't really, I don't think, project a whole lot. You really have to be in someone's bubble to smell this. So not only am I smelling like a delicious food, but then people can't even smell me when I'm smelling like a delicious food. So it's kind of like, I don't know, it's just all around kind of rubbing me the wrong way lately. Um, so yeah, do I love the way this smells? Yes. But do I want to wear it or do I want to keep it? I don't think so. I think I've reached the point finally where I'm ready to just let it go. My type of perfume is more like, if we're gonna talk vanilla and gourmand, something like Spiritus Double Vanille, which is a lot of vanilla, but it's also a little incense-y and it's a little floral and it's more complex. And it's just, it's feminine and beautiful and stunning while having that a little bit of a gourmand touch, but not being overly gourmand, if that makes any sense. So I've talked about this one too long now, but I feel like talking about possibly decluttering Lyra needs a big explanation. Otherwise people think you're crazy. So yeah, that is Lyra. Um, I do love it, you guys. I really do, but um, I'm ready to let it go without any fear of missing out, without feeling like I'm letting go of a gem or a treasure or a collector's piece or something like that. So yeah, this is the last one in my potential declutter list. So that was it for today's video, you guys. Thank you so much again for watching and don't forget to check out Max Aroma if you are looking for any niche or designer fragrances. Again, I will have an exclusive link for you down below in the description box. And thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you all very soon in my next video. Bye for now. Oh,